Oh, hi, I'm the heretic. So let's play a game. And we won! Yay! We've abolished the government in the United States and achieved a voluntary society that organized itself around the free market. As society now recognizes the moral bankruptcy of statism, the idea of the state recongregating is so repellent to people, it's unthinkable. So the state's not returning anytime soon. But what do we do with the state's stockpile of nuclear weapons? It's a question I get every now and then. Truth be told, I am not required to answer it. The state is immoral, and to hinge your acceptance of anarchism on who will pay for the roads is to miss the point completely. Don't get me wrong, you're not a bad person for thinking these questions and it's good to be curious. But asking what will happen after the state is abolished is like asking how cotton will be picked in the US if slavery is abolished. It doesn't matter. Slavery is a violation of self-ownership and therefore illegitimate. Statism is a violation of self-ownership and also illegitimate. They're both unethical and have no place in society. What happens after they're abolished? Who cares? The state is a moral evil and must be abolished right now. Nevertheless, there's curious people. So if only for funsies, let's jump right in and try to figure this out. First off, who gets the nukes? How will they get it? The answer is the same with any previously state-controlled assets, such as, let's say, land. After all, in the US, vast amounts of land are controlled by the federal government, including almost 85% of Nevada. So how do we transition it all into legitimate ownership? The easiest answer is just auction it off. The highest bidder wins. Makes sense, right? You'd think so, but there's several problems. Who sets up the auction? Who gets the money after the auction? Who's even in the position to auction off these things in the first place? It can't be the government since we banished those assholes to the moon. So who? These questions lead us right back to where we started. The answer should be that the federal lands and assets become unoccupied. Whoever can homestead the unoccupied land and assets and make use of it becomes its legitimate owner. Those people who want to take responsibility of homesteading it Congratulations, you now own a nuclear missile silo. According to, well, Wikipedia, there are an estimated 6,600 nuclear weapons in the United States. While not all of them are missiles, obviously, it's still quite a lot. So we need to know what's happening. How could one make use of a nuke? You would need a delivery mechanism, either a submarine, ballistic missile, or airplane. You have to keep them well maintained at all times so they can be ready at a moment's notice if need be. Failure to do so means that there's damage, radiation leaks, and the value of nearby property plummets, which leaves you, dear nuke owner, liable for damages. Suffice to say, really freaking expensive and a big risk. Of course the problem is that we can't just make nukes go away. So what do we do? Is your first guess make use of them defensively? Private militaries and security companies picking up nukes for use as a deterrent against foreign hostile powers? Well, it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? The threat of mutually assured destruction, keeping enemy states at bay. The trick, however, is that the incentives in foreign policy change when a decentralized voluntary society and a foreign state interact. War is extremely expensive. Little fun fact. A voluntary society doesn't want war. They want to trade, and because trade is occurring, it necessarily benefits both parties, because otherwise trade couldn't occur. As a voluntary society wants trade, they just wouldn't go to war. The states would know this too, and thus they have the assurance that they won't be attacked. Making a nuclear deterrent on the state's part against a voluntary society pointless. Even so, just think about it logically. A voluntary society is a decentralized society. You don't need a nuclear deterrent against Walmarts, just don't buy from them. A voluntary United States has nothing to fear either, even from a foreign state. Because the trade benefits the economy of the society held captive by their state, that extra tax revenue benefits the state. It doesn't matter if the state is led by Prime Minister Ben Evelance or Baron Hitler von Satanstein. Going to war against a voluntary society would require these leaders to shoot themselves in the foot economically. Even if their intentions were purely malevolent, 
they still wouldn't use nuclear weapons that would almost certainly annihilate the vital infrastructure and resources that would justify any sort of war. The only reason a nuclear deterrent would be even necessary for a voluntary society to have is if they were in the very situations they have all the incentives to avoid in the first place. But if all else fails, and the nuclear-armed enemy state exists for no reason than to turn a free society into a radioactive crater, then there is nothing a state could have done to deter this. Plus, given that an unregulated technology sector that doesn't have to pay taxes would be advancing tech at a rate never before seen in human history, the technology to protect against nuclear attacks will be far more effective than it would have been had society put its safety in the hands of a state. So if we can rule out nuclear weapons as a deterrent, what other uses for nukes could there be? The uranium-235 and plutonium-239 in nuclear weapons is useful in thermal nuclear reactors. Simply salvaging and dismantling the warheads and selling them for nuclear fuel and scrap metal is one option. Not quite as juicy as a nuclear deterrent, but still very useful. Society might also make it an event, detonating nuclear weapons, televising the spectacle, and even selling tickets for seats to watch the detonation. I don't know about you, but I kind of like the idea of a fancy restaurant in the Nevada desert, and then suddenly a nuclear detonation off 10 miles in the window. Unironic, recreational McNukes. Why not? I mean, you wouldn't buy tickets to watch a nuke go off? That's one idea, but there are several that a free market would almost certainly come up with. It might be useful in mining, or possibly space travel, using directional nuclear detonations in pulses as a method of propulsion. The possibilities are endless. Naturally, this isn't the full extent of what a voluntary society could do with nuclear energy, but if we want to find out its true potential, it begins with recognizing the only reason we haven't innovated past the need for nuclear weapons is the state. It's always the damn state, isn't it? I mean, it wasn't Walmart that brought us to the brink of nuclear annihilation in the Cold War. It wasn't Kmart that dropped bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It was the frickin' state. It's always the state. Questions? Comments? Critique? What do you think is a good, peaceful use of a nuclear warhead? Got any ideas I didn't consider? Support me on Patreon and Ko-Fi. Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.